Welcome back to Talking with Doyle with State Representative Doyle Hefley. As always, the indomitable Hunter Kipe and the unbodied voice of of producer Chuck on the ones and twos. Representative Hefley, what are we talking about today? Uh, well, actually, just wanted to uh, <laughs> just want to briefly talk about SNAP benefits, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. So these benefits uh, people can apply for if they're if they're low income uh, or if they have a family, and it would you know it's it's the EBT card. We used to be welfare, but it's uh, food stamps now. They call them SNAP benefits, and it's for people that, that need that assistance at that time so they can purchase food. Um, so the system is run. A lot of it is run by federal dollars, right? And the mm-hmm. state administrator administers it. So recently, uh, uh, the federal government has actually come back at the state of Pennsylvania because they have not been administering it properly through the Wolf and now the, once again, the Shapiro administration. And uh, and they're saying they're being too liberal and, and they're giving these benefits out to maybe people that, that they're not doing... They're not doing a follow through per se to make sure that only the people that qualify are getting it. So does that mean when you say that they're being too liberal with the money, does that mean they're giving more of these benefits to more families, or is that a continuation it of means, the same family? Yeah. So, so the federal government sets up guidelines to how these dollars okay. can be distributed. And what they're saying basically is that the, the Shapiro administration here in the state is not adhering to what the federal guidelines are. Mm-hmm. And they could be giving that to people that maybe don't, they're not following through to make sure that people okay. that are that are entitled to it are receiving it. So the administration is saying, well, it's just administrative. But it is concerning that, that we've learned this. Obviously, as chairman of the Human Service Committee, it is concerning because uh, it could be something that we could be forced to pay back as a state to the federal government. If And it really is the job of the administration to make sure that they are adhering to these guidelines to administer the program. Um, so with that said, there's two concerns. One is, are we making sure that people that are entitled to the, those dollars are getting them, making sure that there's not waste, fraud, and abuse in the system? Mm-hmm. And at the same time, if we're not adhering to to the guidelines, we could have to pay that money back, and that would be the taxpayers of Pennsylvania having to give that money back because the money that went into that program is gone, right? Yeah. So it would have to be new dollars, and that could take away from currently from people who, who need those benefits to, to get over that hump um, in, in their life. So that is concerning. Um, and I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit of that on a podcast mm-hmm. to, to explain that to folks. The other part is, so back during the Wolf administration during COVID, which is now, I think we're, what, three or four years out About uh, that, yeah. from COVID when the governor, um, Governor Wolf and Attorney General Shapiro pretty much shut down the entire state. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've always said through that, you know, I think we need to take steps, you know, to make sure people were safe. But at the same time, they were saying essential jobs. And I have always believed that if it's the job that puts food on your table it's and essential. pays your bills, it's essential. Mm-hmm. So with that said, at that time, because they had shut everything down, they had applied for waivers through the federal government, once again, for SNAP benefits. And a waiver is like an exemption. And they had received an exemption to say that people that are that are, that are able-bodied uh, individuals without uh, dependents could apply for SNAP benefits, for those food assistance benefits. Mm-hmm. Obviously, people were at home, and we had long lines at food pantries. I had yeah. people call my office, and it was a very chaotic time, a lot of it created by just by bad policy decisions at that point. So the waivers were granted, and people were able to get the, that supplemental assistance and be able to use those dollars. Now, here we are, 2024, and yet, once again, the administration, the Shapiro administration now, is applying for, the, for that waiver. Why? Why exactly? And and that's the key. I and mean, we have seen, you know, record low unemployment levels. Mm-hmm. Currently, almost everywhere I go, one of the underlying issues that I hear is that employers are are not able to find enough employees to fill the positions. I mean, we're not just talking about you know somebody a dishwasher at fifteen dollars an hour because that's about what they're getting right now. Yeah. But we're talking about warehousing jobs paying twenty three, twenty four dollars an hour with benefits. And paid time off to start are not able to fill those positions. And even uh, sign on bonuses, I see that around too with factory jobs. There's good deals for having a full time job now in Pennsylvania. Yeah, and that's exactly, and what we want is we want able bodied folks. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, the, the, to get a job and work and be able to support yourself, that's the American dream, yeah. to be able to raise a family. And and that's what we want. I mean, that provides that self-confidence. It provides thriving communities. By the government just handing out free stuff, and we're looking at, at the federal level, $34 trillion in debt. Uh, and uh, and at the state level, what we're looking at is losing 
employers losing that competitive edge economically to other states because people here, they can't find the employees because our government is wanting to give out benefits and making it more lucrative to stay at home rather than work. Mm -hmm. And and then, in a sense, disincentivizing work. Mm -hmm. We should be incentivizing work. Well, at the same time, you know, this past year, the House Democrats voted for a $3.5 billion personal income tax increase on the House floor, and it passed with every Democratic vote. The governor's asking for an exemption uh, in in these waivers. So the the people that are willing to get up, get out of bed in the morning, go do that job, whether it be working in a warehouse, driving a truck, you know, working for PennDOT, all these different entities that are hiring are going to be taxed higher. They're going to be penalized for living the American dream, for wanting that and achieving that for themselves. Yes, and disincentivizing work. Uh, So um, I would really question why the administration is applying for those waivers, while at the same time, they need to make sure that when they're administering these benefits, they're following the guidelines. Mm -hmm. From a perspective of a a government official and, and someone who has to oversee this stuff, any continuation of these kind of waivers, that's kind of setting a precedent or, or an expectation for what the people might have to, to get these benefits moving forward. It, it kind of forces us into a box if we don't address this right away. Is that part of the consideration here, or, is, or do you think that that's part of what is the, in, uh, the administration is trying to do here is expand the, uh, the total package? I think you know there's been a push by uh, by the this, the House Democrats to really expand welfare benefits and expand you know programs like this above and beyond what the federal government, which are very liberal standards. I mean, look, we're talking about the Biden administration. You don't get much more liberal than the Biden Harris administration wanting to give away money to people that you know through all kinds of social programs, while at the same time penalizing the workers and through taxes. So, yeah, I think this is a, a philosophy of, of expanding uh, government and, and more government programs. And like I said, in programs like this were set up to help people in time of need. If you have if you have a family that's struggling to have children to make sure that they ha- they have food on the table. But expanding that and just giving out generous benefits to people for no reason when they could be working doesn't make any sense. Too close to universal basic income. Yeah, and look, and that's a push, right? That that's already a push. But who's going to pay for it? There is, there. Pennsylvania doesn't print money, right? The federal <laughs> government prints. We don't print money. So I can tell you, if there's universal income, and you're getting it from the state. Somebody else is paying for it. Now, unemployment benefits are a little bit different. Everybody pays into that. The employer and the employee pay into it. If you get laid off, it's temporary. You can collect that money so you can pay your bills until you get back in the workforce. It's not meant to be to, to live. But what they're doing here is is just uh, expanding, essentially expanding socialism or, or welfare to the point where you're gonna you're disincentivizing people to go to work. Why should somebody get up and go to work and do that job when somebody else is gonna sit at home and make just as much and get free stuff from from them? It's an incentive to be lazy. 